that was that that was a book that I had hid when they came and stripped me away from everything. One of the two books, and then I've read multiple times, and, and I had read it in high school. Like that was the last time I had read it, but to, to read it again in that context and in that environment was so uplifting and so inspirational. Um, and to kind of see how those people basically wrote history and made it give us hope, or gave me hope that you know that. That's Mohammed Sultan, one of the most prominent Egyptian-American human rights activists and a former political prisoner. Uh, he's recalling there how he survived a 489-day hunger strike while imprisoned and tortured in an Egyptian jail for nearly two years. His journey started in 2013 under the command of General Abdel Fattah el-Sisi. The Egyptian military raided camps of protesters who supported former Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi. He'd been overthrown by the military just weeks prior. Uh, Sultan was among them, among those protesters. Security forces reportedly killed hundreds of them. Some reports claim thousands died that day. Human Rights Watch called it one of the world's largest killings of demonstrators in a single day in recent history. Uh, Sultan was shot, one of the thousands of protesters who were injured. He was captured and sentenced to life in prison. It was there he gained global attention for staging a hunger strike, suffering 16 months without food and brushing with death nearly 10 times. All eyes were on the US government to get him released, and they did. He was brought back to the United States in 2015 by the Obama administration. Since then, he's filed a lawsuit in a DC court against Egypt's former prime minister for his mistreatment while in prison. And his lawyer now says that in retaliation for that lawsuit, the CC government in Egypt has raided the homes of Mohammed's relatives and detained them. So why should that matter to us? Well, the United States supplies more than $1 billion a year in military aid to Egypt. And the Biden administration just announced yesterday that it approved plans for a $197 million uh, missile sale to that country. In a briefing yesterday, State Department spokesman Ned Price said, we have and we continue to engage the Egyptian government on human rights concerns, and we take seriously all allegations of arbitrary arrest or detention. Hmm. Human rights activist Mohammed Sultan joins us now. Mohammed, thanks for coming on the show. Good to see you. Uh, you filed a lawsuit in Washington, D.C. Uh, in a federal court against former Egyptian Prime Minister Hazem el Bablawi, who lives in Washington, D.C. And now you're saying the Egyptian government is, retali is retaliating against your family there. What are you hearing from your relatives? So we're... My relatives are scared to talk to me. Uh, they are... Uh, because this is the second time they've raided their homes uh, and uh, they ask them about their communication with me. So uh, my family, after everything that they've suffered, because I am exercising my right to go to court and seek accountability and seek justice uh, and speak freely, my family is scared to talk to me because they can get arrested, they can get disappeared, uh, they can go through what I went through. And let me tell you, my family is as apolitical as it gets. Uh, it's, uh, you know, my, me and, uh, uh, I mean, I do activism for the whole family. And so uh, for my family not to be very, very scared uh, to even communicate with me, um, I, there's uh, human rights uh, groups, Human Rights Watch and Amnesty and others um, that are trying to ask around and see what is going on and who's been arrested and who's not. Um, but it's been very, very hard. And I think this is a microcosm of everything that's been going on in Egypt for uh, seven years now under the CC uh, regime. It's, uh, yeah. it's Egypt has become a black hole for human rights and and, and rule of law, uh, state thuggery, and 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 now so, is not just in Egypt against its own citizens, mm. but literally reaching across uh, uh, beyond its own borders into the United States um, and trying to intimidate. Uh, people like me uh, for their human rights activism yeah. um, into silence. So it's not just Mohammed, me. Given they're doing that, given they're doing that, what is it you want the Biden administration to do in response? Because Egypt is a close ally. They just signed off on an arms deal yesterday. Well, that's that the the, the arms deal uh, sort of going off. Uh, uh, you know, them announcing the sale yesterday is an absolute disaster. I, I, I both from an optic standpoint, but also from a real standpoint, this. Um, administration, uh, this, the Biden campaign had promised um, that it will uphold human rights, 
democratic values, and that is going to sort of be this, uh, the, our policies towards the region and around the world is going to be centered around those uh, those issues. And so, uh, all we're asking from the Biden administration is to live up to its promise um, and 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 advocate both publicly and privately. You can't give uh, the the a military regime toys and hardware from one hand and then say, well, yeah. human rights, the way that they understand that is it's a wink, wink, nudge, nudge, do as you will. And, uh, 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 you know, we're going to continue to give you the thing. Your bottom line are your yeah. weapons. And part of that is has been going on for, for again, for seven years now. Uh, we have been uh, 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 supplying the Egyptian government. We have been subsidizing the Egyptian regime. And not just we talk about the $1.3 billion that we give in military assistance. But let's not forget that the United States government is one of the biggest contributors to the IMF and other international financial institutions that literally hand a blank yeah. check to the to the Egyptian government, um, at which you know uses yeah. the patronage system to sort of prop up its own the problem, uh, of course, uh, corrupt folk. The problem, of course, is the United States government has always been very good at cracking down on dictators we don't like not the dictators we do like. That is a fundamental problem that precedes uh, the Biden administration and the Trump administration and others. Uh, Mohammed, I want to ask about your father. He's serving a life sentence in Egypt for his role in the Muslim Brotherhood. I know you two became even closer while you were in prison together. What is his status right now? Are you able to be in contact with him? No, my father has disappeared uh, June 15th, 2020. Um, and he has been, we literally, his whereabouts are unknown until today. Uh, my father is ideologically aligned with the Muslim Brotherhood, but my father was part of the Morsi government, which is why he was arrested uh, after the, the military coup. Um, I, I got very, very close to my dad. I, in prison, he was taking care of me. He saved my life multiple times uh, uh, when I was in prison. Um, and now it's no longer that he's in prison or disappeared uh, uh, for his role in the Morsi government, et cetera, my father has disappeared because of my activism. He's disappeared from prison and his whereabouts are unknown. Um, and, and we literally have not heard, no lawyers, no family members have been able to locate my father uh, for 240 plus days now because of my activism, because I dared to go beyond just, uh, you know, the pale and just, just go to a court, a federal court in the United States and try to file for justice and accountability, um, and and this is this is what this kind of regime is is uh, is, is about. It uses this transnational proposal to not just go after critics inside of the United uh, inside of the country, but also in the United States. That has to come to an end. That not is is not yeah. just a matter. It's not just an affront to human rights I, uh, worldwide, but it's also a breach on our sovereignty. To know that your activism is putting your father in further danger, uh, I can't imagine how stressful that must be and how, how much pressure you must be under. But you do, you have said that when you were previously under pressure, in prison yourself, on hunger strike, you said the autobiography of Malcolm X, the American civil rights movement, they were major inspirations for you. How did you get through that torture and that hunger strike, nearly 500 days? Um... It's, uh, I didn't think I was going to make it, to be quite honest. Uh, I, um, I just, I just wanted my freedom. I, and, and all I can think of, all I can dream of was my freedom. And so I, the only thing that I can do was uh, uh, change, just use whatever was left out of my willpower to try to reverse this uh, um, sort of cycle of repression that the Egyptian government was trying to put me through, to reverse that. Um, and, and, it was, uh, it was, it was, I mean, I almost died over 12 times. Um, and the Egyptian government wow. just, imagine all of this happening, Mahdi, while the, Egypt, the, the United States government was advocating for me. And just imagine, look it's, behind me, it's... this picture collage right here is of 60 prisoners that are Represented we have to leave 60, it. Political well, let's let's leave it um, on that and, note, Mohammed. We're out of time, but let's leave it on that note with people looking at what's going on over your shoulder and what you went through. Mohammed Sultan, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen, and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.